The class today is centered around a photo shoot that we did um, that was called Lived in Precision. So Ellen is going to showcase a haircut that she actually styled in that we shot for this um, this photo shoot. And Ellen is a Sambia art team member. She is driven to teach and she has um, mass experience in the trade show circuit, teaching classes and workshops around the country for years. Her style of hairdressing is described as tradition with a twist and she's in the constant mindset of evolution. So let's welcome Ellen Devine. Hello. Good morning. <laughs> How are so, you? I'm doing good. How are you guys doing out there? Type in the comments. How's your Monday? Hopefully it's a day off for some of us. If not, thanks for joining us. If it's between clients, I should say. Um, so do you want to get into uh, the photo shoot? Um, I love that Katie showed the picture. This is the beautiful imagery we have from this photo shoot we did last year. You saw a little clip in the beginning. These are the amazing models we had. They are so pretty. Every single image that we got was striking, I must say. Um, so you're going to see some of these haircuts roll out throughout this uh, spring, I should say. You saw some last week. You'll keep seeing them. And if we want to go to the next image, this is what we're going to focus on today. Um, this is our beautiful model, Alyssa, we had. Her texture, we loved. So it's lived in precision. Natural texture, embracing your natural texture is what it's all about. Um, she had this great lazy wave. And we really just wanted to do a soft shag on her. So is it a shag? Is it just layers? You know, type in the comments. What makes a shag haircut, in your opinion? Um, so, yeah, we're going to get right into it. You can see in those pictures, too, that it's pretty versatile. What we liked about that is there's a little disconnection at play. And so you can put it up and have pieces hang down. You could put it into a faux bob, anything that really tickles your fancy, I should say. But we're going to work with a razor today. So first, I'm going to show you the razor we're going to work with. This is the blending razor. You can do many of them. Um, I waited to change it. So when we get into cutting, I'll show you how to do that. This cut can be done with scissors or a razor. I did a razor in that picture you saw with Alyssa, um, but today a razor as well. I've also done it with scissors. So my scissor of choice on that one is like the streamline and such. We also have it pre-sectioned. So it gets a little crazy messy. I'm gonna show you and then we'll show you an image in a second. What you're gonna notice as I turn here, she's got a zigzag part. So they have a zigzag part that we're going through and this is gonna be the disconnection on the bottom. When you look at the top, we just took our four quadrants to start, right? So this is the high point, go down center, back to center, front, and then ear to ear. And that's just gonna give you those four quadrants, okay? So you'll notice within these quadrants, we found where the head starts to round, right? So right where the head starts to round, we took a section. Easy way to find that. You can blouse the hair by pushing it up. You could go and make a box on the head. And I'll just show you real quick. If I go right here and make a box, if I roll in, this is right where that head changes direction. So I cut hair a lot based off of a client's head shape. This is going to give a detailed cut um, that fits with their head shape. So if you think about buying a shirt or a pair of pants or maybe a blazer, if you go through and like, get it off the rack. It fits okay. Say yes if you've ever had that before. You buy something off the rack, it feels good, but have any of you ever actually gotten your pants tailored to fit your body perfectly or a blazer to fit it perfectly and you feel really good because it's made for you? That's how I like to approach my haircutting. So if I'm going to create a haircut for a client, I want to customize it to be exactly exactly how I want it. So I see, did I spray the hair with cutting lotion? I'm about to do a leave-in. So I'm going to do a leave-in treatment. You can do any product you want. I like Red Kim One United. This one's a Rusk Replenishing 3-in-1. Um, anything like that. So real quick, I'm going to let you guys know we're going to bring up a PowerPoint slide of the sectioning because it gets a little messy. So if you want to get a screenshot, let's bring that up. Before we take it down, you're going to see you have those four quadrants. And right in the fringe area, if you look in that fringe area, you're going to see I took a little triangle and it just is based off of where the hair rounds in the front and goes to the corner of the eyes. And then we did that zigzag parting and below it, you're going to have where those quadrants basically are divided. 
right? So that's where we're finding where the head naturally rounds. Take a picture. We'll talk more as we get into each section and it'll all come together and make sense. And we have slides for every kind of movement that we're about to do. So thank you for that. Let's see. There's a question. If the customer is going to have a perm, can you do this after or is it better to wait? Well, you know, I think that would depend on do you feel more comfortable like rolling a perm with shorter layers, texture? We are using a razor. I personally think I would probably go in before, before I roll it. So that is just my opinion, but I believe that would be what's your flavor in the salon. Do you like to see your design before you start? Or do you like to kind of put your texture treatment in with it or your color first or your cut first? I like to go through and I would probably do the cut first, but that's just my opinion. Great question. So what you're going to see here, I'm going in this nape area right where we took the bottom. In the image you saw, we already pre-divided it. I like to kind of leave it down, divide as I go. Um, but that's just, once again, my style because I have a lot of clips going on. Sometimes they can get in my way. So I'm trying to just keep it clean. And if that means less clips, then do less clips and you can section as you go. So I'm just going to twist the right side off to the side. Now, in the comments, type why I use a lot of zigzag sections. I don't know if you've ever watched me teach before, but I use them a lot. Why do you think we use zigzag sections as we go? Why would we use zigzag sections? So I'll see if I can see any. And Katie, if anyone says anything or has questions, definitely ask. But we're going to subdivide right where this line comes. I missed it there. Boom. So where you've already divided this line, this is where that head rounds, right there. Just going to continue that down. So take this hair right behind the ear. I'm just going to flip it up over to the side. And now I'm working within just this one little section, we'll call it. It could be called a bevel. If you cut a certain way, we all teach and cut in different ways. I see texture, blending, absolutely. So I'm obviously using a razor. I'm going to get a good amount of texture, but I am also using the hair to give me some texture too. If I took a straight line right in the um, back and crown area, I might feel like I need to go in and add a little bit more texture. This is just like an added bonus, which I love. So as you see, I'm in this back section. It's what we would call Oh, bevels, if I'm teaching PVD, if you know what I'm talking about. If not, this is just the back section, not behind the ear. And I'm going to over direct it. And I'll show you in my slide in a second, but I'm over directing it right to the center. Now, this bottom half is going to be cut disconnected. So, once again, why do you think we're disconnecting the hair? What's it going to let the hair do? We're going to disconnect this hole underneath. I'm dropping the perimeter out. That's my safety net right there. And we're going to cut this shorter. So it's going to be mid-length. So I'm not going to worry about the length yet. We'll do that last. Right now we're working with the silhouette. I'm going to come in and I'm just going to cut short to long. So my finger angle would be diagonal, giving me volume or the amount of hair more towards the bottom. So you're going to get this really nice disconnection. It's going to be super soft. And that's just going to allow the hair, see if anyone says it, smoother transition. Yeah. So you're going to get smoother transitions. It's going to dance a little bit on top. So how many of you guys have ever done a haircut and you find that after you finish it, you have to go to your blending shears like a lot. You have to really blend it out. So I'm trying to give a little bit of dance to the hair, a little bit of disconnection so the top feels a little bit more airy and moves around a little bit. So. Next section, I'll show you the slide in the next one. This center back part, or sorry, this section was over directed to the center back. So I'm just doing a little over direction just to give a little bit more weight as we come towards the ear. Because if you think about the ear right here, the hairline will jump up. We're just trying to not cut too short of layers on the hairline. So I just want to save a little bit of weight right there because there's less hair. If that makes sense, give a thumbs up, give some love in the comments. And as you can see, anywhere I don't want to cut, I'm just going to drop out. So nothing has to blend. That's the beauty of haircutting these days. Nothing has to blend. In fact, my opinion, 
The less blending on these textured cuts, the better, because you're going to get more movement. So now I'm going to come to the next section right behind the ear, right here. And I'm just going to drop out the perimeter. That's so I don't get a hole. I'm going to take this whole section and we're going to over direct it right to where our previous one was. So the point of reference I'm talking about is the corner back. And if we want to bring up that slide, it'll make a little bit more sense. Okay, so we're going to over direct it corner back. Oh, sorry, next one to the, I did the back before the fringe. So we're probably in, yes, this nape and back area. If you look at the little red arrows, right where the red arrow is going to is where the hair is being over directed. So the hair to the left of the center part is being over directed to center back. And then the hair right beyond that, behind the ear, that whole section is being over directed to that point of reference, which we call corner back. And as we cut, our finger position is going to be vertical and the angle in which we slide out with the razor or we slide our fingers is going to be diagonal volume to the bottom. So grab a screenshot if you need, and then we'll catch up on the other side right here. Thank you for that. I switched it up on you guys and did the back before the fringe, but we'll jump and <laughs> catch up there. Okay, so I just did both of these sections. Let me get in frame here. So you're going to see shortness and look at the length that we get. So as you're cutting a razor with a razor, you're going to give like a really soft, gentle movement. I'll show you on the next one. Okay. Anything I've cut, just going to whip out of the way and I'm just going to continue spraying this down. I, I wet it down already, but I'm going to just put a little more leave in because we are going to diffuse. So I want a little bit of moisture in that natural texture. Okay, and same thing right here. Here's where the round of the head is. I'm going to continue that line all the way down. Just like that. So vertical sections going with the round of the head, the hair I'm not working with. I'm just going to flip up over in front. And boom, I'm going to turn the side so you guys can see. My guide now is going to come right from center back. So my guide is coming from the center back right here. I'm going to drop that perimeter out. We're not going to cut the perimeter yet. And my over direction to center back. Okay. Here's my guideline. Now, when you're working with a razor, um, how many of you guys work with razors a lot? Tell me in the comments, like what are some things with razors? You know, do you like them? Are you a little bit fearful? You no, know, for a long time, I didn't use them because clients didn't want them. They requested, oh, I don't like a razor on my hair. But you know, what I found is are we changing the blades enough? So I'll show you in the next section how I change the blade. And sometimes I'll change it pretty often, honestly, because when it starts grabbing and stagging, one, it's not comfortable for your guests. Two, that means that your blade is most likely getting a little bit dull, right? So a little bit dull. Yeah, some people may not like razors. It took me, I'm going to be honest, years to like them. And what I like about like all the razors we have, there's different choices of blades. So it's not one size fits all. This is the blending one. We have a texturizing one. We also have a straight blade one. So they all cut different. And it's really just getting used to trying them out. And mannequins are a great, great way to try that out. You know, so are family members. <laughs> so here's my guide. I'm going to hold the razor parallel with this hair right here. And maybe turn to the side so you can see I'm also elevating it straight out. This is what I call 90 degrees horizontal is how it's trained. Awesome. I see some people love the razor as well. Okay. So here we're going to hold the razor parallel to the hair and I'm just going to move my elbow. This is going to give me a good amount of texture. Very gentle. If anyone has ever done balayage in the salon, I like to say it's a balayage type touch because you're being very gentle with it. You don't want to go in and kind of hack at it because you could cut a hole. You know, it could accidentally go through the hair, cut the length and, you know, make us hate the razor even more. <laughs> but I love them because when I truly learned how to use it, I was like, oh, this is what it's supposed to do. It takes some time, right? It takes some time. OK, so notice that I'm turning the mannequin. If this is your guest, you can turn the chair or you can move your body position. When I cut in over direction, I want my body to be lined up directly where I'm over directing to. 
So over direction will create weight and also a little bit of length as we do it. And like I said, we're doing that because we need some of that weight and length behind the ear because we don't want to cut a hole there. We don't want it to look funky. This is supposed to be very soft and blended, right? So now my body is lined up with our next section, which is right at the round of the head. I'm going to get my next section out. Now this one's behind the ear again. So here's all I do. If I have my ear right there, I'm just gonna take a diagonal back parting and I'm dropping the perimeter as well. So you're almost just cutting this little disconnection of a triangle right there. So saving myself from cutting any type of hole. My body position is now gonna line up with that spot right there. Let's get to where you guys can see good. So my body position is right at the part. Now you're gonna have different lengths because of the zigzag parting. So you can pull over and eyeball the disconnected length. Or sometimes I like to go through and measure and say, okay, that's about you know four inches from the scalp. And now we'll cut. Very gentle, very gentle. And the other tip too, you wanna to use different parts of your razor. If you use the same part consistently, meaning the heel or the toe of it, the back or front, or maybe you focus on the middle a lot, that's gonna dole out first. So as you razor, you wanna hit different parts of the blade so it lasts a little bit longer. Okay, now this is looking good. I'm gonna check myself. So I. I don't cross check often, but I can visually look for balance. So as I do this, I can tell I went a little long in this first one here. I'm just gonna lift and check because I think at the bottom I pulled out too soon, meaning if you look right here, I kind of drag down too soon. So I'm gonna get some of that length off. With the shag type haircut, you want some airiness to it. You want it to really embrace that natural texture. And I tell you what, if you have a really sharp razor blade too, you're not going to run into any kind of weirdness with like wavy hair using a razor. I've done this haircut on a lot of different textures and it works really beautifully. Shout out to my friend Judy. She got this haircut for me a couple of days ago um, and her hair is a little bit straighter. It does have a little wave to it, a little straighter. We used a razor on it and it's awesome and she wears it straight so it's not tied down to just being wavy or curly all the time okay so now that we have the nape and back disconnected you can see we have this little bit of bend happening a little bit of curl i'm going to show you how we change our blades and just right here so we get our blades lined up this little slot right here is where you put that blade in and you're just going to pull down and just pop it in. Okay, now I'm gonna continue using this white blending blade and I'm just going to slide up and it's easy as that. It's like magic. <laughs> All right, how are you guys feeling out there? Are we feeling good? We're gonna jump to the fringe area now. So that was my bad. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll actually start in the fringe area. Um, I got really excited and started in the nape area. There's no right or wrong. You can start this haircut wherever you'd like but we're gonna to jump to the fringe area. And why do you think that is? We're gonna to jump to the fringe because this is the first part that your client will see if they don't have bangs. Uh, maybe they're just really nervous to get bangs. And sometimes I like to just get the nerves out of the way. Um, and also it's like time for them to sit with it and kind of get used to having a fringe. Maybe you wanna stay a little longer. If you look at the PowerPoint right now, you'll see we're going to take this triangular section and it's going to be elevated straight out horizontally. And we call that the way I was trained in cutting was PVD by Redken. It is 90 degrees horizontal. And so when we talk about that, we're talking in relation to the room, which I'll explain in a sec. There's not going to be any over direction. I'm going to keep it in its natural fall. My finger position is going to be diagonal to give a little bit of length towards the eyes. And then the finger angle will be volume to the bottom, meaning the length towards the eyes too. So grab an image. You can see the top and side view. And then we're gonna come here and show you how it's done on the mannequin. All right, so what I like to do is section that triangle in half. So I'm gonna work with a smaller area. 
So I'm just going to go through. I wet that down again, put a little bit of leave-in in it as well. Now, this triangle section that we have is we want the hair to be in its natural fall position. That's the whole purpose of how this section is happening. The hair, it wants to live in its natural fall. Have you ever cut bangs? Um, whenever you cut bangs and someone's like, oh, this hair won't go over or else they have long pieces that start hanging down over their shorter fringe. That's because you might have gone not enough into the natural fall or maybe beyond the natural fall. So how you find it real quickly, if you take your comb and lay it on the head shape right here, where that comb lifts off is where the head starts to change direction. That's going to be where you take your section and it's going to go right here to the corner of the eye. Now you can go beyond this and add like a fashion fringe. Um, I just always let my guests know that if, if we do that, they might have to work a little harder at getting maybe calyx to sit or that hair to go exactly where you need it to go. Okay, so we're gonna cut a, a little bit of a guide first. I have my section in half. Here's my center part. I just took a little bitty piece from each side and I'm just gonna comb it oops, from underneath and just let it kind of bounce in its natural fall. I'm not gonna go too short with it. We're gonna stay a little bit longer because if it's got curl too, we wanna give it room to bounce up. So let's go right to the bridge of the nose here. And as I do that, I'm just gonna let it sit in its natural fall for the guide because then I'll lift and elevate. Now, anytime we elevate hair, we're really working on the layering. I'm not necessarily doing the perimeter. It just so happens that as I elevate it, I'm also cutting that perimeter, which is the length of the hair. All right. If you guys are feeling good, show some love in the comments. If you have questions, please ask. Here we go. I'll show you first this side to show the elevation, and then we'll also show you the angle that it's going to be cut at. So I'm going to take this entire section up. Now, notice I'm just going to comb it to my guide. I'm gonna elevate it straight out, 90 degrees horizontally. So here's my elevation. Now watch as I cut, and I'll get out of the way for while I cut, but this is what the angle is gonna be as I'm elevating. So you're gonna have a little bit of a diagonal so that you get that length towards the ends, okay? So let's go catty corner. And I'm combing from underneath to catch that hair. Here we go, there's the elevation. And I kind of like to rock my razor, I'm gonna get this out of the way, back and forth. So I get length off and I'm also getting a little bit of texture. And you can leave this as long as you want on the corners. If there's a long piece, I just snake it off right there. So you're getting a really nice little swoop and you're also getting layers with it as well. And that's the purpose of doing that. Okay, let's go this way. Now we're just gonna connect, do the exact same thing. Comb down. I'm gonna grab my guide from the center. Here's my elevation. Straight out, 90 degrees horizontal. And then my angle is gonna go boom, right? Let's go this way with it. Make sure you guys can see. So you could cut this many different ways. You could cut this with scissors if you want. I would do the same elevation if you're trying to get that nice uh, layered effect in there. Okay, now I'm coming from the top. So I'm gonna come from the top and just rock as I go. Now I'm gonna have to visually find balance on the opposite side and see where we hit right here, just like that pop it up so you guys can get a good look. Easy way to cut fringe. Looking for balance where the longest piece is. And if it's a little bit shorter on one side, it looks about even. There's a little bit of thickness on this side too. So I'm just going to go through and I'm just going to go vertically now. This is just going to add a little bit more texture in there and a little length off too. Cool, that's the fringe area, super easy. Okay, so now we got the back done, the fringe done. We're gonna work on the sides. So while I take this off, I'm going to just clip back the back area so I'm not picking it up. And if we wanna bring the next slide up, 
we'll show you the side area. Perfect. Awesome. So the side area, we're going to keep the theme going with our elevation being at that 90 degrees. The reason I'm doing that, so when we elevate to 90 degrees, we're getting a straight line in the silhouette, which when you think of the silhouette, that is really just, is there a curve to it? Does it look straight? It's going to give a visual harder line in a good way. So we're getting softness from our tool, but we're going to get a harder line in the silhouette. You're going to see the layers more elevating it straight out. So our over direction now is going to be to that corner of the eye. So I just put to the corner front, our finger position, which is how we hold the hair is going to be to, it's going to be vertical. And the angle is going to be diagonal volume to the bottom. And all that means is the length is going to be more length at the bottom. Cool. So let's show you how it's done. Awesome. Doing good. Okay, so I'm going to take this entire section now, comb it forward, get that clip out of the way. So it's just going to come straight forward. We're over directing to the corner, meaning the hair is coming to the corner and our guide is just going to come from the outside of the fringe area. Coming from the outside of the fringe, let's get a little piece of a guide. I'm going to comb all the hair forward. Another tip about body position. Now I'm cutting a little bit high for my height, um, but that is just so that you guys can see. A good place to cut hair is kind of heart level, I would say. So if you're gonna cut heart level, so you're in a comfortable body position, right? So over directing the corner front, here is my guide. My finger position is vertical. It's meaning this would be horizontal, vertical. And now my angle, is going to be diagonal with volume, meaning more hair to the bottom. Okay, so nice and easy with the razor. If you're going to do shorter hair, you could cut this even and get an even more dramatic uh, face framing, right? So all we're doing is cutting layers and some framing right here. And you're going to see it gives a nice little soft frame to it. This is a great way to cut face framing in general. So it's going to layer it and also give you that short to long length. So you could go shorter with it. If you adjust your finger angle, meaning we did volume to the bottom, so it was diagonal, that's just going to leave me length at the bottom. If you don't do that, your framing will stop a little higher up. So if the hair is shorter, that's how you can adjust that as well. Let's dance around and go to this side. Same thing on this side. I'm going to take this entire side section. My guide is going to come from the corner of the eye right here. Let's see. I'm going to read this. When channeling, I'm afraid it will make holes. Any advice how you can take out not so much and do it? So channel cutting is what I'm assuming. Um, maybe explain that a little bit more if you're scared to get holes when channel cutting. I, If I'm assuming you're talking about channel cutting, which is when you take weight out in between a lot of thick hair and going shorter in between, I would get really clean sections. That would be my main thing. I always think like when cutting hair, sectioning is like the key. My dad does uh, woodworking for fun on the side. And, you know, they always say measure three times, cut once. Um, I have no problem with cutting twice if I need to go shorter, but you definitely don't want to go too short to start, right? So sections is kind of where I always focus that on. Okay. And I also would just make sure you're cutting per with purpose. That's what I always say too. Like if you cut with purpose, meaning where is it actually thick? Am I putting a haircut on my client just to put a haircut on them? Or is it something that's really detailed for them? If that makes sense. Cool. So we're just going to comb down and then I'm just going to stand in front of it and check for balance. So this side right here, it can get long sometimes. Now razors, Obviously not perfect every time because I'm my arms moving at different speeds. I might hit some hairs that I didn't hit on the other side. Just go through and check and visually check for weight. Cool. How are we doing, Katie? Any questions that might have come up as we get ready for the top here? Yeah, there was a question from Moon Rain. And I feel like it has to do with that, the side over direction layering that you're doing right now. Yeah. Um, is that over direction helpful so you don't create a hole like around the ear area? Totally. Great question. Yeah, think about it. So if over direction creates weight and also length, 
That is why I over-direct it. One, it gives me length automatically spilling back. So I'm just going to pump this up so you can see here. If you have over-direction to the front, your length is going to come towards the back right here. So see how we get that length in the back. If I over-direct to the back, it's going to be shorter in the back and longer in the front. Think of like a stacked bob, if you've seen those, right? You get more length in the front. So I over-direct forward so that we don't get any shortness around the ear or a jump up, especially because we haven't cut the length yet. So length will come after. We're focusing on the internal texture, the silhouette, and we're going to cut some of this length shorter. So I know that I'm going to go shorter right here. But absolutely, anytime you want to save yourself from cutting like a hole in anything, over direction is your best friend. Great question. Thank you. Okay, so we got pretty much all of that done now. I'm going to still clip the bottom and sides out of the way. This is just so I don't pick it up as I go to the top here. All right, and now we're going to jump to the crown area. So let me go low so we can see. Now there's a lot of clips in this. You don't have to clip away every piece of hair right away. Sometimes I'll just leave it in quadrants and I'll subdivide as I go. So I have less clips. We're also gonna wet this down. She's been twisted up a little bit. So just wet it down. Let me set my razor down here. And that's another thing too. Like someone had asked the question in the beginning, like, are you using a cutting lotion? Anytime I'm working with a razor, I do want some kind of slip in it. So I did put a cutting lotion in before a section. So we have that going for us. Um, but you can also add it as you go. Cutting lotion will kind of help let the blade of the razor slide with ease. So absolutely product is your best friend anytime you're cutting and you need to alleviate any kind of stress on that hair. Just going to wet this down. And I'm going to flip it forward. Okay, so we're going to go into that crown area. Now, we've done a lot of horizontal cutting. So you keep hearing me say horizontal, horizontal 90. So what that means is when we elevate hair, so elevation creates layers. If I elevate the hair straight out, this is a horizontal line when you look at it, right? So that's a horizontal line. So we call that horizontal 90 because check it out right here. If I elevate straight up, let me go in front of it because I have black on. That would be a vertical line. So we call that the vertical 90. When those two corners meet, that creates a 90 degree angle. Hence why we say 90. So 90 degree angle is, is happening when I elevate the hair straight up vertically or straight out horizontally. They both give me a straight line in that silhouette of the hair, meaning it's not going to be flippy or anything. It's just going to give a nice, straight, smooth silhouette. So we did all 90 horizontal. Now we're going to go 90 vertical at the top. And the first thing we have to do is kind of establish our guide. So I'm just going to pick a little piece before we get into it. I'm going to comb this straight down. And this is going to be where do we want the shortest layer? Now, some people don't want it too short. Maybe some people still want to get um, like a, what am I trying to say, a round brush in it. So make sure you're cutting it to fit your client's lifestyle, needs, whatever they're looking for. But I'm going to go quite a bit short with it because why not? And this is just from the top. Let's say like, oh, I always like eyeball it. So if we say like four or five inches maybe from the scalp right there, you can also bring it down and it's like right about the tragus of the ear, which is the middle of the ear right there. So I'm just going to measure and then just cut, get it nice and short. Okay, so here's my guide. So we're going to elevate this all the way up. I'm going to take this entire section right here. So here's my section. Boom, boom. Taking the entire thing. And if you want to get the, um, the PowerPoint up, to show you how this is going to work. So if you take that entire section and you elevate it straight up, if you look at the red arrows there, they're both being over-directed towards the center of our section. That's because there is a little bit of over direction happening if I'm taking that whole section at once. It's not purposeful, it's just happening, right? So I'm calling it out because it's happening. So there's a little bit of over direction happening. Center of the bevel, it's gonna come straight up and my fingers are gonna be held vertical. 
Also, the angle would be volume to the bottom to create length, but you could also go even with it here. So if we were to come back to me, and if you guys need to screenshot that again, just ask and we can pop it back up. Okay, so here we are. So here's my fingers. They're gonna insert vertically. I'm gonna float straight up. And right here is my guide. Boom, right on the corner. It's hard to see, I know, because it's a little tiny guide. There it is. So my guide is right there. And I'm combing to the center of your section. Okay, now you could go straight across. When I say even, it means that I would cut this hair straight across. We're gonna do a little bit of a diagonal to keep length towards the bottom. Okay, and now my razor, I'm gonna flip to go up. That's why I like that this twists and turns. So we're gonna go straight up with it. And now still using the same tips, a little bit bigger of a movement, I should say, as we razor. So if you think about your arm as a hinge, and I learned this from um, someone like, if you're using just your wrist to cut with a razor, you're going to get a blunter line, right? So if you're just doing this, you're not taking as big of a stroke. Before, we were using our elbow, so it's almost like a balayage, very gentle. You're getting a medium amount of texture. When I'm on the top, I'm hinging from like my elbow, so I'm going up and down pretty big. That's going to give me a lot of texture, right? So I'm looking for a lot of texture happening in the hair as I cut. So you can see short pieces within there. So I don't have to go back through, but if I want it to go back through and add more texture, I would just take my razor and just softly go between the hair and add a little bit more texture. So if that makes sense, send some love in the chats. If you guys keep having questions, continue asking. That is that whole quadrant right there. Sorry, bevel. All right. So we just finished that one. Now we're going to jump to the next. Boop, boop. Okay, so right here is our next section. All I'm doing is, if you think of these like a slice of pizza, the back had two quadrants, we split them in half, right, where the head rounds, right? So if you're just joining, we just added where the head rounds is where we took our section. It's like a slice of pizza. Um, and we should have, like, if we showed the top image again, I think in the sectioning, because I just want to show you guys how this is broken down. The top image is going to show just on the bottom right, right there. You'll see in the back, it looks like four slices of pizza or pie, if you like pie. That's what the sections and you're taking that whole entire pizza slice, let's say. And that is what we're cutting right now. Cool. So thank you for that, guys. OK, now here's the side view so you can see the elevation. Just working within that one section, our guide is at the high point is where we took that guide. And right here is my guide, Boop, right there. Little tiny guide, okay? My razor is pointed up. I'm gonna lower my mannequin. So if this is your guest, lower her or them in your chair. My razor is just gonna insert and big texture. We want big texture. Notice how my angle of my blade is slightly turned in. It's not completely vertical. So I have it not completely vertical, but slightly turned in so that it cuts. We don't want to have to do this a million times, right? So awesome. I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. Okay, let's jump to the other side. And I'll be honest, when I do this in the salon, once you really get used to it, um, super quick cut. It goes really fast. Obviously, when we explain stuff, it takes a little longer, but you could do this cut very quickly. And then diffuse it is all we did with Alyssa. So we'll probably see if we can hit this with a diffuser and just get that natural texture. Okay. So same thing. Let's wet this down and we're going to get the next section as well and wet that down. And then after that, you only have two sections left. So doing good. I'm glad you guys are liking it. It can be scary. I know someone said scary, but cool. It is a little scary sometimes. When you use a razor, it can be a little bit scary. But, you know, if you use scissors, let me show you how to do it with scissors too then. And if you think about, you know, the fear of like the razor and stuff, I swear a lot of it for me has happened based off of the touch I've had when using it. So really just think about like that balayage touch when you do it. Um, because if you're doing like an aggressive, like 
razor, it that's when holes kind of happen. That's when like a big chunk happens. So it can be scary, but grab a mannequin, you know, like anytime. And I'm sure like any our team member ambassador could agree with this. Anytime I'm creating a new cut or I'm experimenting, it is a true experiment because I've thrown away mannequins because I'm like, well, that's embarrassing. That didn't turn out or it just doesn't work sometimes. So it's a beautiful thing to have mannequins to work on. These are my favorite ones. These are the Lydia's. Um, they're the Sam Via mannequins with pivot point. Shout out to the best mannequins ever. Um, so I love these. They're great. Do some long cuts with the razor. Take them short afterwards. Like I use these all the way until they're pretty much scalped, right? So eventually I'll take it to a clipper cut. But it's so key to practice. And practicing does take time. And it does take a lot of work. So razoring was not my first choice. Now it's like something I do all the time. Here's my guide. Same thing. Big texture. Another thing too, when we talk about like, what about when they come in a second time, right? So if they're coming back in and they still have a lot of texture, maybe next time you do the scissors, right? So if you're doing a lot of texture the first time, you might want to jump to a scissor because they're going to have a lot of frayed ends, right? So you're going to need to maybe just go through and get more of a blunter line. So let's show you how I would do this with the scissor. Picking up the next section. Remember my guide is coming from this high point right here. I'm going to spin so you can see to the side here. And I'm going to actually drop this so we can just see a little bit better. Let's drop both of these. All right. Okay, so here we go. So now I'm going to just show you how I would like attack this with a scissor. So I'm doing the same elevation. There's my guide, right? Now I'm just going to come underneath with the scissor and just cut short to long, short to long, short to long, just like that. So you can use that as well. It doesn't have to be just a razor. Keep your options open. Um, when using tools in general, it's like anytime I used to learn a haircut, um, I would kind of attack it like this is the only way to do it. That's just not true. You know, like if someone wants a shorter version of this at the top, instead of having a diagonal finger angle, make it even right. Cut it straight across so they have a shorter top. If they want shorter in general in the back, you could disconnect this sucker like an inch from the scalp if you want. So there's so many different ways to do it. Just going to lift so you guys can start seeing the shape. Okay, so we start getting this nice texture, and we're going to cut some of this length off too after. Let's jump to the front, and then we are done. Getting there. So if we want to show this top section, here's your screenshot opportunity. It's the same thing. The only difference, before when I was doing the pizza pie slices, my fingers, the tip of my fingers were pointed at the high point of the head. And I'll show you when we get back to me. But when you do this one, now there's going to be pointed straight across from each other, but the same exact elevation. If you look at those little red dots, or sorry, the red arrows, you're still getting a little bit of over direction naturally happening. You're just going to come it right to the center. And I cut this way a lot. Like things don't have to blend all the time. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. So if we jump back to me, I'm just going to show you what I mean here. If you look at my fingertips, they're just going to go to the center of that section right there. In the back, my fingertips were pointed at this high point right here, right? So that's where they're always going to be pointed. You could switch that too if you want. Let's see if I can get my mannequin back on. There we go. Okay. So here we go. Elevate to the middle. There's my guide. Remember that blade is going to the top, so it's facing the ceiling, and we're cutting short to long. Big texture. Boom, done, and same on the opposite side. Elevate. Now I'm gonna spin my guest. So you guys, I always wanna cut short to long, right? I don't know if you've ever tried to cut long to short with a razor. I have in the past when I was first learning. It's a little difficult. doesn't really work. So you want to cut inside out. So move your guess or go in front. Get your body position in front of it. So right here, 
My body is in front of my guests now, short to long, big texture. And the cool thing is, is it does not have to be perfect and blend. Just what works. Here we go. So that is a done cut. Now let's just do a little bit of a, just going to show you like a little quick style. Oh, we're going to cut the length too real quick. But I'm going to wet this down, give the opportunity for that curl to come back. These mannequins kind of come with a little bit of a wave, which is really nice. Pump it up. And honestly, with the length that we took the front side section, so the face framing, you could leave this length in the back. You know, the mullet shag is in too. So you can leave this length as long as you want. And I get a lot of, a lot of water in there. And I'm just gonna rake through with my fingers. And then, excuse me for one sec, grab my razor again. Okay, now this is pumped up best I can get. I'm gonna stay back so you guys can see the length. I'm gonna switch to my wide teeth comb. Notice I'm also using the white teeth on dark hair. That's gonna help me see the lines a little bit better. Okay, wide teeth. And I'm just gonna connect the dots right now. So here's my shortness from the front. And I'm just gonna go in with my razor. And I'm vertically going up and down. And then I go to the horizontal to get it to the side. See right here. So the length in general doesn't have to be a specific length. Um, I believe at our um, cut with Alyssa that we did, we liked her length. Like I really loved her length. Her hair was beautiful. So I just really trimmed it up to make it look healthy there. So if your guest has beautiful, luscious, long hair and wants this cut, you can absolutely do the exact same cut. Just all you got to do is extend that finger angle. So it gives a little bit more length at the bottom. Okay. So right here, going in vertically and then horizontal, and then vertical, and horizontal. And I'm just getting any long pieces I see. And now I'll jump to the front side right here, right where it starts to shift. I'm just gonna follow it down. And that's it, super easy cut. What's really cool about the disconnection in this cut too, like I said, you can make this look into a bob if you want. All you have to do is really section out that top area and just have it be natural and fun. Let them have options and explain to them like all the options they can get from it. Great haircut on straight hair, on wavy hair, on curly hair. If it's curly, maybe you want to do a little bit more texture in there, like channel cutting as someone brought up. Um, meaning like maybe I would use scissors on curlier hair. If I'm too freaked out to use a razor, use scissors and do the exact same cut but you're just gonna go through like I showed you in the front and cut short to long. So I'm just putting a little bit of working paste in. I'm glad you guys have learned so much, awesome. And I'm just gonna scrunch some product in. So if you guys have any other questions, Katie can bring them in to me. Yeah, okay. been good. There was one quick question, what was the cutting lotion? Oh yeah, so I mean, cutting lotion, I use a lot of different kinds. The one I'm using right now is actually, it's actually, um, it's a rusk one. It smells really good. It's a three in one. Um, it's for like normal hair, but you know, my other favorite one is Red Kim One United. Um, I love that one. I use that one in my hair. It also offers heat protection. You could use an oil for a little bit of slip. There's so many options. I would say Use the cutting lotion that speaks to you. <laughs> Some of them like can be a little heavy. So just get a nice light one that you can layer. So I, you saw how much I layered on and I'll continue to do that. Anytime you're working though, if you know that someone wears their hair curly, uh, curly hair, wavy hair, it needs moisture, right? So it definitely needs moisture. So see, I'll even like whoop, put it in some more. If someone wants more volume with it, maybe I'll do some mousse with it as well and moisture. But I just kind of scrunched and I'll twist in some curls. But even with Alyssa, we just scrunched it up and, you know, she could flip over. You could have them flip over. I'm going to just grab my blow dryer down here. And I'm working with our blow dryer and our diffuser. This was a limited edition a few years ago that I really like using. So it might be a little loud. I'll talk over it. But another thing, too, is I'm going to tilt my guest back. Let's see if I can get pump it up higher so you can see. 
There we go. So my guest is going to tilt to the side or back. All I do is say, put your head, sorry, put your hand on the chair rest and just kind of lean to the side or have them tilt back, whatever's comfortable. We're going to take the diffuser, just go underneath and then just twist. So this is how we styled out that one for the shoot. We just twisted it and you just hold it till it dries. If you use minimal hands, the better. So you just want to allow it to start drying in its natural state and give it a little bit of twist. Now, sometimes what I'll do is I'll put my hand behind the diffuser just to make sure it's not getting too hot. But this blow dryer, all of our blow dryers have heat settings as well. So they can be cool, low, high heat. Right now I'm working on low speed and high heat. Um, but in the salon, I do high heat sometimes or sorry, low heat sometimes if they're sensitive, but I do like to use a lower speed on curls. That's just my flavor to help with like frizz and such. So up and twist. And I would just do this all around the head till it starts drying. And the twist is just going to kind of lock in, boom, just like that, the curl. So if they tilt over, you're going to get a little bit more volume in that area. And rather than just having them straight look up, if you just look straight up, you're not getting to the scalp there. So if you want more, you're going to lift and twist just like so. And I like the Pro Light dryer, especially in the salon. I really like it because if I work all day, I'm not going to blow out my shoulder or anything. It's a great, great blow dryer. And guests really like it too because it's, it's hard sometimes for our guests to uh, blow dry their own hair. I'm sure, have you guys ever heard, I wish you could blow dry my hair every day. So getting a good tool is key. Um, so even recommending this blow dryer to them because it's easy for everyone to lift. It's super light. The fringe area, I will sometimes use my hands and I'll just use the diffuser to diffuse really the airflow. So I'm not really scrunching the bangs as much as just like a tiny lift and diffusing that airflow. Just like that. And I would just do that all around the whole head. So you can see this mannequin gets a good amount of curl. I'll post some pictures of the after on my um, Instagram, which is Ellen Divine Hair. So if you want to see the after on the mannequin, I'll post it. But remember, it's that picture of Alyssa that we showed first. So I hope you guys learned some stuff. There it is, the beautiful Alyssa. We even did a little updo with it. Um, yeah, so if you guys have questions, just reach out on Instagram. I'd love to answer them. Um, definitely, if you have anything, let me know. Fabulous. There were not a lot of questions, Ellen. Everyone's just giving you a lot of love. I had a joy watching you recreate this cut again. So many little golden nuggets, especially the zigzag sectioning. And my big takeaway, I loved watching you create the zigzags where you left um, a higher angle around the ear to maintain yeah. density. I have fine hair, so I'm like, that is such a hot tip. Yeah. Appreciate that. Good. I'm glad everyone enjoyed it. Yeah. Awesome. You guys make sure you give Ellen a follow on Instagram and TikTok. Her pages have a wealth of more knowledge. So give her a follow and we will see you back on her page probably in the next coming months. Yeah. Thank you guys. Bye, Ellen.